Hey guys, it's Liz from BlueAndHazel.com. Welcome to my homeschool channel. And if you are new here, um, I am a mom of four kids and we're homeschooling. This is our fifth year homeschooling, um, but our first year using Ambleside Online, which is a Charlotte Mason homeschool curriculum. So um, in this video today, I wanted to do a wrap up video for you to just kind of share my thoughts on how we are gonna finish our Ambleside school year since we will not finish all of the readings in time. Um, and so I've been thinking about this a lot and I know that a lot of you are probably in this similar situation where you're feeling like, oh, we wanna take a summer and this is sort of the date that we wanna start summer by or you know, take an extended period of time off, but we're not gonna finish term three yet. What do we do? And I know my kids are really waiting for a break. I need a break just to recharge, plan a little bit better for next year, take some time off to just enjoy this nice weather that we're having. And, um, I think everybody's just looking forward to a break. So I don't know if we'll take the full two months. I feel like my sweet spot, honestly, for summer is about a month off and then we start really craving some structure, but we definitely need to take some time off. And I wanted to just dive in and share how, um, how it's gone finishing up the schedule and what I'm planning to do since we won't get through all of the readings by the time summer starts. Um, so if you have any wisdom to share on your plans or thoughts on finishing up the Ambleside online year, um, especially if you have you know several kids at home or if you have some that are finishing at different times, I would love to hear what your plan is. Um, I need all the wisdom as well. So this is what um, my plan is. So I'll go ahead and dive into that. Know that this is not the only way to finish. This is not the best idea for your family, but this is just what my game plan is. And I wanted to be honest with that along the way, um, partly so that you have some ideas if you need, and then also so that you can just see you're not alone and feeling like you're not gonna finish everything. Okay, so this year we have a year one, year three, and a year four doing Ambleside online. We have read some fabulous books I never would have found without Ambleside. And I'm so thankful. We are planning to continue on using Ambleside online. Um, and I know that this is a challenging curriculum and I know that um, deep down, if, if I would have chosen a different Charlotte Mason curriculum, we would still be reading books, but maybe not as many. And so I've tried to kind of take that pressure off from Ambleside Online to bring back a little bit more of the enjoyment of school. I feel like this year had a lot of books, more than we were used to, um, too many for me personally, especially with three levels, that was just really hard this year. Um, so as my fourth grader became a little bit more independent, that was super helpful. Um, as we discovered, you know, taking some of the books and doing audiobooks um, with my older two, that was really helpful. Um, so they could be more independent with that. Um, and so we found little tips and tricks to kind of chug through more of the, the readings, but overall we've gone at a pace um, just to keep peace in our homeschool, we've got at a, we've gone at a slower pace. We would just go the pace that we needed to, sometimes taking an extra few days to finish a week. Um, and so what I kind of would do was just fill, um, fill these schedules in based on, you know, what readings we had finished and I would color it in as we went. And so technically whatever that week was would be done when all of the, um, boxes were colored in and so that's just how we would slowly finish one week's worth of work and go to the next week so sometimes it would take longer for us and um like i said that just kind of kept the joy in the homeschooling world for me but i do feel like at the end of the year we get to this place where okay well now we we might be several weeks behind schedule and so what do you do with that? So a few options that I just wanted to lay out there. I've thought about all of these <laughs> options for our family. And um, so I'll just throw them out there so that if you're still thinking about this, you can consider what would be best for you. But um, one is that you could actually just call the year when you wanna start summer and say, you know what, we didn't finish X, Y, and Z books, but that's okay, whatever. We're just gonna start the next, um, next year's books next year and we didn't get to them um, all this year but that's okay and that would be okay if you wanted to do that um you have the freedom to skip books stop in the middle of books um you know not finish them that is okay if if that's what you're comfortable with i personally have thought about this for our family and i don't really feel like i want to just skip 
midway through some of these books that we are either invested in or are enjoying. However, I will be satisfied to completely um, X out a book that we are not liking or that my kid is just really, really not wanting to read or not, not into or invested in. Um, and so, you know, I kind of will go through each of the kids' years of the things that we're finishing up but behind on and give a case by case basis for each of the books. Like, is this worth finishing out? Is this not? All right, so yeah. the next option that I considered is just calling it when we wanna start summer and saying, we're gonna stop here wherever we are midway through some of these term three books. And then when we start again, whenever that is in a couple months, we can start back on those same chapters um, and just pick up there. We'll call it, you know, your next school year, whatever grade you're in, but we'll finish those earlier books from this year. Um, I was not on board with that idea for me personally because um, it's just going to give me this nagging feeling of perpetually always being behind. That would bother me a lot. If that doesn't bother you a lot, then that could be a great way to do, um, you know, to finish out all the books, even though you're technically starting the next year. Um, long term, if you follow Ambleside for a long time, that could get you behind quite a ways, um, potentially a full year behind which is also okay. You know, the books are challenging and they're hard. Um, some other Charlotte Mason curriculums are reading similar books in Ambleside, but at a much later age. And so it's not necessarily a bad idea if you get a full year behind in Ambleside eventually. I don't think that's gonna be the end of the world. But um, for me personally and my personality, I just don't think that I wanna have that feeling of being like, constantly trying to wrap up old books, even though we're starting this fresh, exciting new year. Okay, so the third choice that I have for finishing up our school year, and this is the one I have decided to go with for our family, it just makes the most sense to me, is that we are going to have a hard stop for um, finishing the school year, then we will start summer. Um, basically, the first of June is my idea of our date but um, that might look different for you, but we are going to have about four to five weeks of the school readings left on our calendar here that um, will not be finished. What I'm going to tell the kids that they get to do is that they are going to finish most of their readings, um, but I won't require narrations and I'm not going to worry if they read ahead to finish early. I am aware that, you know, by not including those narrations in the last four to five weeks worth of reading, that that could really impact their um, understanding of the material, their re retention of the material, their processing of what's happening, uh, maybe their recall of what happened later. I get that that's going to affect it. Um, I just think that they need a way to kind of feel like they can speed up this process of finishing the school readings if I'm not gonna allow them to just cut them all. I know they're gonna love that because the narrating part is definitely like the hard mental workload for them of reading these books. and. Um, some of you might not feel comfortable letting go of narrations and say, hey, that's really jipping them of their education. And you get to decide that for your family. There's nothing wrong with, you know, doing it different. But for me, I know that I want to finish some of these books. I don't necessarily want it to be the same mental load as it has been for them because I know they need a break and they need summer. So for these four to five weeks that are at the end, I'm just going to say, go whatever speed you want and you don't have to narrate. For me, that was more of a meet in the middle situation rather than just not finishing these books. So I hope that just sharing our plan encourages you to know that you're not alone and not finishing the school year on time according to schedule, that you can still have a great school year without finishing, and that you have some options on how to handle those unfinished school readings at the end. Um, we are going to have a lot more time in the summer to do family read alouds because my time is gonna be freed up. I'm not gonna be working with each kid doing math. I'm not gonna be working with my lower two kids doing all of these readings, and I'm not gonna be listening to narrations over the summer. So I'm gonna have a lot more time. I know I need that to recharge, but I also know this is gonna allow me to do more read aloud time. So we are going to do read alouds in the summer together. I'm planning on having the kids do silent reading time in the summer together, and possibly some math as well. I don't have a plan for that currently, but I know that I don't wanna have this big recession with math. But as far as read alouds go, we are gonna do the Burgess Bird book. Um, any chapters that I haven't read with my year one, I'm going to read as a family read aloud. It's a lovely book, it's enjoyable. I like it, so I know my big two who have never read it are going to enjoy it as well. Trial and Triumph is another one that is scheduled for each of the kids' years. 
we haven't gotten to all of those readings. And so I'm gonna pick some of those over the summer, especially from year one, um, and um, probably the ones that we missed from my year three. And I will just read those to the family. And the last one from their schedule is Parables of Nature. And um, that is just an incredible book. I love that book from Ambleside Online. And so um, it's one that, uh, my year four didn't unfortunately get. And so he is the one that has listened in when I read that as a family read aloud and really just enjoys that as well. I do too, but he does too. And so I'm going to read those stories that we have completely skipped out of my year one schedule um, and do that with my uh, whole family. Okay, so last thing I wanna do is just give you a realistic look at each of my schedules for year one, three, and four, and just share with you things that we are totally not getting to um, once that summer date starts, and then also the books that we will switch over to family read-alouds and which ones I will just read to them or have them read independently or listen to audio independently. Okay, so starting with year one here, um, we will have some Our Island Story Lift. It looks like we'll probably have about three readings. I am just planning to drop that. Buffalo Bill is one that I have not started yet for term three. I don't think I'm going to get to. Um, I own the book, so if you have um, a first grader who loves that book or you found it to be superly beneficial to read, let me know. It could influence me the other direction, but I think I'm just gonna call it. And um, the Burgess Bird book we'll do as a family, like I mentioned. Paddle to the Sea, it looks like we'll have about three readings left. That one will be super simple to finish up for him. The James Harriet Treasury, I love that book. It's been like one of the highlights of the first grade year for me. And um, so we will do that last reading for sure. Aesop's Fables, they take five minutes each and they're wonderful stories. So we'll definitely just plow through those. And just those stories, I will have probably one, if not two of those to do as a family. Those are awesome stories. My bigs did not get them since we're new to Ambleside Online this year. So that will be a very easy, fun thing to read out loud. All right, so for my year three, um, we are gonna have a lot easier time finishing up the year for her. It's a little unfair just because my year four has a lot more book readings. And, um, but that's the way it is. We also decided to X out Landing of the Pilgrims um, for my daughter. And that was just a way for me to kind of lighten our daily reading load. And she had had just um, with other curriculums that we have used in the past for her first and second grade year, she's had a lot of exposure to early American history. And so I feel like for her, she is just starting to get a little bit like, I want to get past this. I want to get past this. I've heard this before. So I just decided to X that one out. And we're going to have Secrets of the Woods to finish up and Parables in Nature, she will be listening to that as the family read aloud. That'll just be one we do together, like I said. And then um, she actually got ahead on the Jungle Book and I allowed her to listen to that at a faster pace on um, the Yodo Mini. And that is all for her because Shakespeare is a family subject for us. So really truly, she might even finish like on time, no problem. All right, so for my year four, his uh, his is going to just have the most left, unfortunately. And so I want to help him out with that by not making him feel like he's the only kid that has all of these extra readings while summer started for everyone else. Um, in order to do that, I think my plan is I'm going to take um, Incredible Journey and, and I'm going to turn that into a free read for him. So instead of him having to narrate, I'll let him read at whatever pace he wants to finish that without narrations. Looks like we'll have Legend of Sleepy Hollow left over. I will also ask him to do that as a free read. Um, no narrations needed for that one. And then Age of Fable, we've already crossed out. If we have any of Madam Hound Lady Y, I'm just going to X that one out. It's not been a favorite of his, to be honest. Um, and you know, maybe it just takes a little bit of getting used to, but I'm okay with him crossing that off his schedule once that summer date hits. Storybook of Science, actually he likes, and I will just let him listen to the audiobooks without narrating those. Um, you know, he's very scientifically minded. I think he enjoys that. I'm not super worried about, you know, him narrating that last, you know, five weeks worth of material to me. If, if it clicks and sticks, great. If not, I'll just let him listen. Men will be done, Ocean of Truth. Um, that's a pretty easy one to just speed ahead with. I think that would be a pretty quick book to finish. 
Okay, so Abigail Adams, I am undecided about. I feel like that is a book that I thought that we would enjoy a lot more because so many other people said it was one of their favorite year four reads, but I do feel like it does a great job at giving you this time period example and to understand what, you know, the characters were going through and the hardships of the day. And but for me personally, I'm reading this to my son. Um, it's just very drawn out and long and, you know, detailed. And I feel like he does not enjoy that book and is not like excited for me to read it. It, I'll probably let him just not finish it if he's not into it. Um, George Washington's World is a book that I think is worth every story. It's just um, an easy read and it covers a lot of people and there's a lot of characters mentioned within different stories that overlap in those time periods. And so I will have us finish that kind of no matter where we're at. This country of ours, whatever is left, I am going to let him cut. So um, yes, he might not get all of that history reading in, but he just in general knows a lot of history, reads a lot of history, and I'm just really not worried about that for him. So, um, so that's kind of my plan for our family. I'd love to know what you're thinking for your kids. Um, what end of the year plan you have for those readings that you're not finishing. Leave me a comment, let me know. Hopefully it'll help everybody else as they're figuring out how to finish the year and what to do with those unfinished reads. If you found this video helpful, thanks for giving it a thumbs up and be sure to check the description. I will put an Ambleside Online playlist if you wanna see any more of those Ambleside videos that we are doing.